when the critics say there is no evidence for a global flood. You sure about that? Pretty sure, yeah. If Noah's flood was true, what would we expect to find? Evidence. If a global flood happened, we'd see a single chaotic sediment layer worldwide, mixed fossils from every era thrown together like a geological soup, and zero transitions between periods. But what do we get instead? Well, we get perfectly ordered strata, fossils appearing in the correct evolutionary sequence, and no global flood layer anywhere. Shut up and sit down, you big ball f subscribe. Well, hello there. Now grab a brew and settle in because today we're wading knee deep into the claim that Noah's flood actually happened. Spoiler alert though, the science is about to say absolutely not. But let's have some fun pulling it apart, shall we? <laughs> well, if everything was running for its life from rising floodwaters, we would expect to constantly find fossil tracks in rock layers below where the organism that left them was found. If everything were running for its life, we'd expect every rock layer to look like a chaotic stampede. Footprints under every fossil, everywhere on Earth. But that's not what we find. Tracks only occur in the specific environments that preserve them. And those environments appear in different layers separated by millions of years. So, uh, no, it wasn't a global marathon towards higher ground. We would also expect to find whales far from the ocean and even on mountains. Oh, absolutely. If a single mega flood sloshed the oceans over the continent, we would expect to see whales stranded everywhere like confused blubbery tourists. They'd be on mountain peaks in the desert and your nan's back garden. Whale fossils on mountains exist, yeah, because mountains used to be seabeds before plate tectonics push them skyward. So no, the whales weren't yeeted uphill by divine bathwater, they simply lived there, where the ocean used to be. We would expect to find not just river aquatic life fossilized readily, but deep sea creatures buried in sediments as well. Oh yeah, because if a global flood had happened, we would be tripping over fossilized whales in the Alps, seeing fish casually hanging out in the desert, and dinosaur tracks tap dancing beneath every rock layer. Earth geology has zero evidence. Evidence? Earth geology has zero evidence for any of that. We would expect to find fossil graveyards with a mix of aquatic life and land life. We would expect to find evidence of rapid plate movement and subduction. We would expect to find slabs of Earth's crust near Earth's core still cold. We do find mass fossil beds like this one in Nebraska, but they're typically caused by local disasters like a lake bed drying up or a tsunami, not a global flood. Instead, we find fossils neatly sorted by ecological environment, like marine versus terrestrial, and evolutionary order worldwide. So the only thing mixed up here is your understanding. We would expect to find radiometric dates that perfectly land on the biblical young earth creation timeline for seafloor spreading. We would also expect to find fission tracks near the surface of rocks. We would expect to find the majority of rocks have different radioactive elements at different gradients within them. We would expect to find the majority of radioactive elements on the crust of the earth and not deep inside of it with them being highly unevenly distributed. So the flood somehow set radiometric clocks perfectly to match a biblical timeline. Radiometric dating shows rocks are millions to billions of years old, and not 6,000. Fission tracks form inside minerals over long time scales. They don't magically appear on the surface, and most radioactive elements are deep in the earth, not conveniently sitting on top. In other words, the flood didn't play God with radioactive elements. What are you on about? We would also expect to find rapid formation of granites worldwide. Granite is an intrusive igneous rock defined by its massive interlocking crystals. Forming those enormous crystals requires magma to cool deep underground over vast stretches of time. Thousands, even millions of years. If you cooled it rapidly, you'd end up with a fine-grained rock like rhyolite or even volcanic glass. Rapid granite is like asking for instant ice cream but still hot. It just doesn't work. We would also expect to find a total lack of fossils in the geologic column because not a lot of time has passed. And since millions of years have never existed, we would expect fossil gaps and missing fossils everywhere we look. 
We have literally found hundreds of millions of fossils worldwide. So the fossil record is so immense and the Young Earth Creation Model has the opposite problem because it requires an impossible population density before the flood to account for all the organisms we've actually dug up. If a lack of time meant a lack of fossils, we'd have virtually nothing. And oh yeah, we do find gaps, but those gaps are almost always explained by erosion or periods when no sediment was deposited which is entirely consistent with slow conventional geology over millions of years. We would also expect to find very few total fossil impact meteor craters on Earth as well. We would expect to find pooled water under hills and mountains. We would expect to find all of the continents getting flooded at the same time worldwide. But that claim completely ignores erosion and plate tectonics. Again, the reason we have relatively few preserved craters isn't because we dodged the space rock, it's because our 4.54 billion year old Earth has had time for things like wind, water and crustal movements to fix the potholes, if you like, or erase the evidence. If the Earth were young, erosion wouldn't have done its job. Not enough time, see? And we would actually find a lot more visible recent craters like the ones you see on the Moon. We would expect to find the Earth before the Flood was created full of oxygen and water and Eden from the very beginning just like the Bible says. But Earth only became full of oxygen after the Great Oxidation event, a massive evolutionary and chemical shift driven by photosynthesizing bacteria that took place about 2.4 billion years ago and gradually changed the atmosphere. The early Earth was a hot and volcanically active oxygen-free nightmare, not a garden. So not only was it not Eden, but it took billions of years for the atmosphere to even become breathable. We would also expect to find the fossil record does not show only slow, gradual change over time, but complete contradictions of that throughout the entire geologic column. I mean, you can expect that, but it's gonna be wrong. But I suppose why change the habit now? This is just straight up false. The fossil record is the strongest evidence we have for a slow, gradual change. The key is the consistent, predictable sequence found globally. You'll never find human fossils next to trilobites, and you'll never find mammals below fish. This orderly, non-jumbled sequence is the very definition of evolution over time. We would expect to find fossilized, soft-bodied organisms completely opposite of what Darwin said would be possible. We would expect to find the same rock layers going across continents. We would expect to find mountains that formed soft and bent before the rock solidified. We would expect to find the ocean's acidity and salt have not yet reached equilibrium. We would expect to find a single ice age in ice core layers. We would expect to find that river deltas have very little sediments built up. We would expect to find dinosaur tracks going through supposed millions of years of geologic time. All you're doing is taking real observations like folded mountains and the existence of groundwater and then forcing a creationist interpretation onto them. So in my humble opinion, for what it's worth, I think you may need to manage your expectations. Because for somebody who is calling every scientist that has ever existed wrong, you're expecting an awful lot, aren't you, you silly goose? We would also expect to see the ark be able to carry a massive payload of animals if required. Yeah, you definitely need to manage your expectations. The ark would have had to carry millions of species, not just 70,000 kinds, whatever the hell a kind is, to account for the genetic diversity in the world today. And worse, it would need a year's supply of fresh water, specialised food, as well as climate control and a massive waste disposal system. Where are all those animals pooping? Especially the big ones like elephants. Mm. And all that was managed by an old guy and seven other people who were related to him. It's not a capacity problem, it's a logistics, sanitation and staff to animal ratio problem. Think about it like this. Imagine if I was standing here in this video telling the people who watch me that I had two of every animal in existence in my back garden. You'd think I was completely insane and a liar. So why do young earth creationists deserve any better? 
in 2014, a group of master students at Leicester University decided to settle the question. They used the biblical measurements to calculate the size of the ark, then they used the density of the water to figure buoyancy, and from there, determine how much weight the ship could endure before sinking. Their conclusion? Noah could have put 70,000 animals on board and the ship would have floated. Technically, yes, the study is a real study. I've had a look at it and it does confirm that a barge of the same dimensions as the Ark would have the buoyancy to support the weight of 70,000 animals. But that's just a fun fact. But buoyancy only tells you if the structure floats. It says absolutely nothing about whether it can successfully operate as a functional ecosystem for a year. So yeah, it would float but it would float as the world's largest, stinkiest, and most disease-ridden septic tank. They proved the structure was sound, but the mission was still impossible. We would expect to find that when only a single pair of animals are left isolated on an island, for example, that they can recover and repopulate easily without any inbreeding problem. The exact opposite of what evolution expected to find. That's exactly backwards, though. Evolution and basic genetics predict that starting from just one pair is a catastrophic problem. Even if the animal isn't a cat. It's called a genetic bottleneck. The fact that most species today do not suffer from widespread catastrophic inbreeding depression is actually proof that they didn't originate from just one pair a few thousand years ago. Real world species have gone through bottlenecks like the cheetah and they are constantly battling these very problems. Genetics is brutal and it doesn't care about biblical timelines. We would also expect to find the oldest living organisms only go back to the date of Noah's Flood. Well, I've got one word for you. Trees. As in trees like the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine, with individuals known to be over 5,000 years old. That's 700 years older than when this flood apparently happened. Or a tree's layers too. We would also expect to find low genetic diversity in all life. And we would expect to find mutation rates in all life to be fast that take us right back again to global flood event. If all life did come from just a few pairs 4,300 years ago, we would observe incredibly low genetic diversity globally. But we don't. The observed high genetic diversity in nearly all species today is a direct contradiction, proving that populations have been large and evolving for millions of years. And the fact that you aren't currently melting down due to a genetic failure proves that mutation rates are slow and predictable. We use these rates to measure divergence, and they consistently point to billions of years of evolution, not just a few thousand. We would also expect to find all life is genetically about the same age. And we would expect to find population growth matches up perfectly to this date of Noah's Flood. Well, good luck with that. By using molecular clocks, scientists measure mutation rates to see when different species or human subpopulations genetically diverged. And these divergence times range from thousands of years to millions and even billions of years. If all life were the same age, we wouldn't see any difference between the genetic age of a bacterium and a bird. We would also expect that the oldest civilizations, the oldest forms of irrigation, the oldest documented mathematics, medicine, music, brewing of alcohol, astronomy, and even calendars all go back in time to Noah's Flood. But that's another direct contradiction with the archaeological record. We have continuous, non-flood interrupted records showing that the earliest forms of complex civilization, writing and maths were already established in Mesopotamia and Egypt well before 3000 BCE. Even older, massive organized settlements like Chattel Hoyek predate the flood by over 5000 years. And organized ceremonial sites like Gobekli Tepe in Turkey were built on almost 10,000 years ago. The idea that the entire long, rich historical record was just reset 4,300 years ago is completely destroyed by the monuments, records and artifacts that still exist today, exactly where they were left before the supposed flood even began. Nice. So the 
evidence they claim to expect either doesn't exist, is totally misrepresented, or actively disproves their biblical timeline. I don't get it, and I don't see why people like this can't see that for themselves. He's pretty much done the debunking for me by expecting things which, for the most part, disprove his young earth creationist beliefs. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like the smash button before you leave, and I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. Do you know earlier today, before I started work, this bloke knocked on my door to ask for a donation towards the local swimming pool. So I give him a glass of water. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever go.